If you're looking to buy a new MacBook, you're probably more confused than ever before in terms of which one to buy because the entire MacBook lineup looks more similar than ever before now that they've all been updated to the new design with the flat top, rounded edges, and notched display. But don't worry, I can guarantee that if you stick through this video to the end, you'll know exactly which MacBook is right for you. As far as pricing, we've got the M2 MacBook Air for $999, the new M3 version for $1,100, the larger 15-inch M3 Air for $1,300, then the 14-inch MacBook Pro for $1,600, the high-end M3 Pro version starting at $2,000, and then the 16-inch MacBook Pro for $2,500, which quickly becomes $3,500 if you want the insane M3 Max chip. And by the way, each of these Macs is currently on sale on Amazon for killer deals, like only $850 for the M2 Air, so check out the links to those deals down in the pinned comment below. Kicking things off with design and portability, the MacBook Airs are basically identical in terms of looks with a super thin design that gets just a little bit thicker on the 15-inch MacBook Air, which has a much bigger footprint than the 13-inch Air. But other than that, they're basically identical all the way around except for the added bonus of having a larger trackpad on the 15-inch. Now bringing the MacBook Pros into the mix, they're a lot thicker. In fact, the entire 15-inch Air is thinner than just the bottom portion of of the 14 inch MacBook Pro and then the 16 inch model is even thicker than that. And in terms of weight, the 16 inch MacBook Pro is almost twice as heavy as the 13 inch Air, 4.7 pounds instead of 2.7. And surprisingly, the smaller 14 inch Pro is actually heavier than the 15 inch MacBook Air, which is why the Air is generally the better pick for those who care the most about portability, especially with the 13 inch model. Now, as far as the displays, here are all four of them side by side so you can see the differences jumping from the 13 inch Air to the 14 inch Pro and then to the 15 inch Air and then the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So if you care the most about display size, the best bang for your buck is obviously the 15 inch MacBook Air for $1,300. But of course, there are so many more things to consider which might be deal breakers on the Air like the ports, so let's jump into that. Thankfully, all of the Mac MacBooks this year come with MagSafe 3 for charging, which is amazing to use, but keep in mind that the MacBook Pros come with 70 watt plus chargers that support fast charging, all the way up to a crazy 140 watt charger with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. All MacBooks get a headphone jack as always, but the Airs only get two USB-C ports that support Thunderbolt 3, while all of the MacBook Pros come with three more capable Thunderbolt 4 ports split between both the left and the right sides, which is quite convenient to use, as well as an HDMI port and an SD card slot, which in my experience are so much more useful Useful than I expected them to be. Now, if you like the idea of connecting to external displays, the old M2 MacBook Air only supports a single external display, while the new M3 Air and the $1,600 M3 models support two displays, but only if you close the lid, which means you'll need to get a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. On the other hand, the M3 Pro MacBook Pros support up to two displays with the main display running, while the M3 Max chip model supports up to four external displays. Now, before we jump into performance, we've got to talk about the pretty massive display quality differences. But first, I want to mention that no matter which MacBook you buy, and especially if you don't upgrade very often, I fully recommend installing Clean My Mac X from our sponsor, MacPaw, which is basically a one click solution with a feature called Smart Scan that does cleanup, malware removal, and speed up in just two minutes, keeping your Mac fresh and running great for years. The UI is very clean, simple, and organized, telling you everything you need to know about the condition of your Mac, like your battery health and temperature, and it packs a bunch of other useful features, like Space Lens, which lets you see which files are taking up the most space on your system, which helped me find and delete a forgotten 55 gigabyte backup that was wasting storage space. Clean My Mac X has been around for over 15 years while 
while being notarized on the official app store where you can try it out for free for seven days. And if you like it, you can get 20% off for the next month using discount code MAXTECH by using the link in the description below. Now, I personally care a lot about speaker quality. So for those of you who are like me, here's a quick speaker comparison so you can hear the differences for yourself. Yep, the MacBook Pro sounds so much better than the Airs, mainly because of the extra thickness, which allows the speaker enclosures to be larger, thus greatly improving bass reproduction. All of the webcams are now the same 1080p quality, which is great, but there are some differences in the microphone quality with all of the MacBook Pro models getting studio quality mics. This is the microphone quality on the M2 MacBook Air. This is the microphone quality on the M3 MacBook Air. And this is the M3 15 inch MacBook Air, which has a higher viewing angle. This is the 14 inch M3 MacBook Pro. This is the microphone on the M3 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro. And this is finally the 16 inch MacBook Pro with that higher up viewing angle. Getting back to the MacBook Pros, these all have a really unique mini LED display compared to basic LCD on the MacBook Airs, which honestly looks so much better when watching videos or movies since it can peak at up to 1600 nits of brightness compared to the Air, which is always locked in at 500 nits. And even if you're not watching anything, the pros get a brighter 600 nits of standard brightness, which is always nice to have. But because of the mini LED local dimming technology, the contrast and colors really pop compared to the MacBook Airs, which look really gray and dull in comparison. And not only that, but the MacBook Pro support ProMotion, which basically means the display can run at up to 120 hertz refresh rate, twice as smooth as 60 hertz on the Airs, which is a big bonus for gamers, and ProMotion can automatically adjust down to 24 hertz to match the content you're viewing like a 24 FPS movie, which helps save battery life. Now, in terms of real world mixed battery life, all of the new M3 Max have gotten about one hour better battery life compared to the previous M2 chip versions. So here's a full chart of the real world battery life differences that you can expect, with the best being the 15 inch M3 Air and the 16 inch M3 Pro MacBook Pro. And now with that said, let's finish off with performance differences. First up, we have SSD speed, which has gotten a huge upgrade on the base M3 MacBook Air compared to the old M2 model in terms of read speed, as well as a modest boost in terms of write speed. But the M3 Pro and M3 Max models had by far the fastest SSDs because they use PCI Express 4.0. And looking at general system snappiness using single core performance in Geekbench 6 as a reliable gauge, the M3 models are faster than the M2, of course, with a small improvement as you go up the line. Now, multi-core is where we see a huge huge difference since the higher end chips have more cores. So I added in a couple of extra configurations with specific core counts that you can upgrade to. And we can see that the M3 Max in particular is insanely fast due to having up to 12 performance cores. Now, since the MacBook Airs are fanless, they do lose performance due to thermal throttling when you're doing longer workloads. So the 10 minute run of Cinebench 2024 is the perfect test to show this off and and I added in the MacBook sizes as well. As you can see, the M3 MacBook Pro is finally starting to get ahead, thanks to not being throttled since this model does have a fan, and the M3 Max is just insanely fast. And then if we look at graphics performance using Geekbench 6 as a general guide, we are now using GPU core counts, which range from eight 
on the base model airs all the way up to 40 cores on the top end M3 Max. The new M3 chip MacBooks were barely faster than the M2 and it quickly shot up with the M3 Pro and it just got insane with the M3 Max chip. So with that said, how do you translate all of those numbers into value to help you make the right decision? Well, the best way in my opinion is to calculate score per dollar, particularly in Cinebench CPU performance and metal graphics. In terms of extended workload performance per dollar, the 13 inch MacBook Airs are by far the winners due to the price being so dang low at only $1,000.1100, with the worst value actually being the $3,500 16 inch M3 Max variant scoring 0.39 points per dollar. And now let's do the same test, but for Geekbench 6 Metal Graphics, but I'll be using the prices for the smaller 14 inch MacBook Pro sizes for all of the high end MacBook Pros, seeing as this test isn't throttled by cooling. In terms of score per dollar, the old M2 MacBook Air is still knocking it out of the park as the best one in terms of value since it's only a thousand bucks. But this time around, the top of the line 40 core GPU on the M3 Max beats it out with 42 score per dollar. But of course, this is with the 14 inch model, which we don't recommend if you're getting the best 40 core GPU. So if you choose to pay $4,000 for the 16 inch model with the best M3 Max chip, the score per dollar goes down to 39, which is incredible and the best option for graphics related work. And now with all that said, let me finish off with my purchasing recommendations. Based on these value charts, the $1,000 M2 MacBook Air is by far the best value if you want to get a very reliable and powerful MacBook for as little money as possible, seeing as you can get it on Amazon for only $850 using the link below. Now, if you do care about that new M3 chip and you know the benefits and the extra features off the top of your head, then I would probably spend the extra $100 to buy that model, especially since it it could help with resale value. But out of every MacBook in the lineup, I actually think the M3 MacBook Pro for $1,600 is the best bang for the buck if you're trying to save money, seeing as it offers incredible features like mini LED display with ProMotion 120 Hertz technology, as well as the extra ports like the extra SD card slot and HDMI port. But seeing as the score per dollar was the worst one out of the lineup, if you do have some extra cash to spare, I would go up to that M3 Pro 14 inch model for a huge boost in performance as well as a jump in RAM up to 18 gigs, which is great and the two times larger SSD, which for $1,800 on Amazon right now is a killer deal. And finally, if you care about performance above all else, I would honestly go with the 16 inch M3 Max with the 40 core GPU because it's simply a powerhouse almost as fast as the M2 Ultra Max Studio. And if you're okay with sacrificing a bit of performance or fan noise, then the 14 inch version of that model is great for portability. And if you're still not sure which one to buy, go ahead and ask me down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to give you some purchasing advice based on your workflow that you do on any given week. Or of course, you can wait until Apple's M4 chip MacBooks, which will be coming later in the fall. So hopefully this video helped you out. And if it did, click that circle above to subscribe and check out one of those two videos right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.